Uh, my name is James Cook, and uh, I'm a photographer here in Victoria, BC. Uh, I've lived here for about 15 years, and I've uh, been shooting film pretty much the whole time. One of the earliest memories I have that has to do with photography is the camera that I had when I was maybe five or six years old. and. Uh, just playing with it all the time, even when there wasn't film in it, like the winding mechanism and the click that the shutter would make, like I can remember it just vividly now, even so much later. But it's something I've only taken really seriously in the past five or six years, probably. That's a really interesting way of uh, making something out of nothing. I just sort of wander around with the camera. I think what I like most about it is it's, uh, it forces you to look at the world in a different way than you normally would. Like I often go for walks around the same places I've gone hundreds of times. You sort of have to trick yourself into seeing, seeing things that you wouldn't see normally before. Yeah, going for a walk with a camera, uh, it makes it so much more interesting because it's like a little, a little treasure hunt. You get, to, you get to look for things that you wouldn't normally be looking for. Like almost subjectless, but uh, I find it very interesting. It's like, it's looking for beauty and mundane things that you walk past a thousand times, like I was saying. Just like growing up on magazines and skate magazines and admiring all the, the photography that you didn't even understand as a kid and, and being able to look at it from like a technical standpoint and being able to understand it, uh, I don't know, it's like a, another level of appreciation for, for skateboarding which has been so influential to me. I really like to be involved in every aspect of it if I can. I bulk load my film, I shoot the film, I develop it myself, and then I make darkroom prints um, all completely by myself, like without anybody else having their hands in it and something I'm really proud of. Yeah, there's just a, a level of pride, I guess, when you are holding something that you made completely by yourself in your hands that wasn't uh, compromised for any reason that I really enjoy about it. I bought my first and larger probably four years ago, um, just off a of marketplace. I made it work in the smallest bathroom I've ever, ever had in a, an apartment. Um, I couldn't even open the door when everything was set up, so when I had my enlarger set up and everything, I was in there locked in for a couple hours. I've tried to fix a couple film cameras over the years and been successful once or twice. When you peel the case off of one of them and just see like all the intricacies, like all the little gears and cogs and springs and everything, like it's so interesting to me. It's always been just sort of a for me thing, like it's never been it's never been about trying to make something of it. Like it's been a hobby for me, first and foremost. It's not something I ever expect to make money off of, it's just a massive money pit to be honest. But yeah, I'm uh, absolutely over the moon about being featured in uh, one of Ben's Holy Grail pop-ups. Uh, he's already featured some amazing artists and really talented people, so I'm just uh, beyond flattered to be included in one of these. I primarily shoot black and white film. I really enjoy how it gets you out of your comfort zone and forces you to look at things very differently. You're looking for shadows and highlights and contrast. 
I, I just hope that people feel anything when they look at it, I suppose. If looking at anything that I've created can, can make somebody feel something at all, I think I feel pretty accomplished. My name is Alex Scorheed. I build and shoot pinhole cameras, made mostly out of trash, uh, mostly around Victoria. Got interested in it when I was about 17 maybe, but never actually did it. I'd ordered some t-shirts and some CDs from a punk label, and they'd sent a bunch of extra stuff, including this weird magazine, kind of radical politics and weird sexual advice, and also a, kind of a breakdown on making pinhole cameras. And I didn't do it then, but I really wanted to. And then it wasn't until, you know, almost 15, 16 years later, I finally got into it. Um, really does appeal to that kind of punk rock ethos of DIY. So it's all made from, from trash, from, from things around my house. There's a shutter made of electrical tape, and under it is the pinhole. Open the shutter, expose the pinhole, which lets light into the container, and then you take this and you develop this like you would um, a print for a, for a photo. What I do mostly is just scan it and uh, invert it digitally. With pinhole, that's really where I started thinking about composition. You have limitations because if, if the camera stays still during exposure, it's an unlimited depth of field. It's everything's in focus. So you really have to think about how you compose the image. I end up shooting a lot down places like Dallas Road, things like that with interesting kind of natural features, um, but also movement because it's a long exposure you can capture movement in it pretty well. Waves and stuff end up looking kind of neat. How it started as a project was documenting Victoria, especially older buildings, ones a lot, kind of inadvertently, a lot of the stuff I shot early on has all been torn down since. And I've kind of, kind of steered into that. Um, seeking out places, any, anything with a development sign up on it. If it looks interesting, I'm going to take some shots and uh, document what it looked like before it was a hideous condo. This is my, uh, my trash cam. It's a 35 millimeter pinhole camera. So I get about 30 shots out of a usual um, 35 millimeter roll of negative roll. These are applesauce packets from, from my son, um, and then the actual part that goes down to crank the film, it's pieces of pens that I've uh, used at work until they've run out of ink, and I've taken them home and chopped them up and used it to advance the film. So there's really very little, besides a bit of glue and a bit of electrical tape, there's really not a whole lot I've had to, to pay for here. In terms of the exposure times, in the process. Basically these are not super well made or at least made to any kind of set standards. It was really trial and error. Basically make a guess, shoot, and then write it down. And then I'd develop it and then see how, see how it looked. And we just go back and forth and, and I've got it pretty dialed in. It's tough with these because they are long exposures. If the sun pops out from behind a cloud or something, you really just have to, to guess. You say, oh, it was a 30 second exposure, but now the sun's come out, I'll cut it at 25 or something like that. So it's very, it's very hit or miss, and it's very much kind of based on feel. With, 
with this, I, I've measured everything. I've scanned the pinhole. I know exactly kind of down to the point of the millimeter that it is. I'm kind of doing, doing the exposures. I do them by hand with the shutter, pop the shutter, use my finger, uncover it, cover it back up. And often I'm doing it kind of as quick as possible. They're kind of sub one second exposures. It's pretty accurate. Um, and it's, yeah, I, I kind of have less shots that don't work out with this one. You know, it's not something I kind of think is ever going to become a full-time gig for me, but I'm just interested in kind of pushing it and seeing how far I can go with it. <laughs>